Grace and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord Jesus. Amen. The text is a simple one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. What about Puxatani Phil? Last Thursday, he came out. Did he see his shadow? You're supposed to know this. No, he didn't see it. There's going to be six more weeks of winter. Six. If he sees it, that means the sun is out. And spring is coming. So speaking of spring, how are you doing on your spring house cleaning? How many of you still do it? About like last night, we had three out of 45. How many still do spring house cleaning? Seriously, get your hand up. One, two, three, three out of 180, 50? Shame on you. Why did we do spring house cleaning anyway? Remember what we did? It's like I'm not talking to the choir here. You never had the opportunity to take the mattress off, a mattress, and to hang it over two clothesline wires so it'd be spread out. Some of you are smiling like you know what I'm talking about. The rest of you are like, duh. And then you took your mother's beater. Remember the beater? What? A rug beater, it's wire, heavy wire, shaped like a teardrop. And it's got a wooden handle on it. And you wail on that mattress as hard as you can. I think I was 10 or 11. And your mother's watching from the door and when you get enough debris floating out of that mattress where you can't see your mother anymore, standing by the door, then you know you're done. You know why you did that? Tell me this. How come after eight years, your mattress weighs six more pounds than it did when you put it down new? What? What's in there? What adds all that weight to it? Your pillow too, by the way. Yeah, yeah you shed skin all the time. And bed mites eat the skin and the mite manure is in your bed. And it weighs more when you take it to the dump than it did when you bought it. It is impure. Blessed are the pure in heart. That means the clean. You never took out the paper in your shelves and cleaned out the cupboard and the cups and the dishes and put down new paper? How many ever put down newspaper because you couldn't afford to put down shelving paper? Uh-huh. <laughs> you weren't there in World War II, were you? Yeah, we couldn't afford shelving paper in World War II. We put down newspaper, hopefully that which had the least black on it, so we didn't leave marks on the shelves. Beat the pillows, take down the storm windows and wash them, and put up the screens, and clean the house. My mother said, See if you know the rest of this. Cleanliness is next to... What's that about? What did God mean when he said to his people coming out of Egypt? If you follow my clean laws, then none of the diseases that afflicted you in Egypt and that afflicted the Egyptians will happen to you. And why did he lay down all those rules about blood and sex 
and childbirth and places for waste and such ordered structure that would keep them clean. We didn't always have antibiotics. We didn't always have fighters that fought against catharos. A catharos is unclean. Blessed are the clean in heart. Those who are catharsized. Those who've had the bad stuff drained off. Blessed are the clean in heart, in heart, for they will see God. When I was about three or four, I had a uh, whooping cough. Ooh, 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 cough, just cough awful. They thought I was going to die. And Dr. Heath, in Manitowoc, Wisconsin, where my dad was building submarines, my mother was making bolts for the submarines, Dr. Heath said, we've got a new thing called antibiotic, antibacteria. And it's starting to work on the soldiers. And they get wounded in battle, but they don't get infection. Would you want to try it? And every several days, they chased me upstairs because I hid behind the pink dresser because I didn't like that shot in my butt. And they gave me a shot in the butt anyway, and I got over the whooping cough because they gave me penicillin an antibiotic because the bacteria made me have whooping cough. They say that in the Revolutionary War, seven people died from infection for everyone that died from bullet or bayonet. Same is true in the War of 1812, same is true in the Civil War. I think eight died from infection, every one that died from bullets, because the infections were a catharsis, unclean. Blessed are the clean in heart, for they will see God. So what's this business of unclean? When did that start anyway? When the serpent deceived Eve and she ate and Adam also ate, the lion rose up and killed the lamb. Cain rose up and killed Abel. The whole creation was thrown into a catharsis, unclean. The whole creation had been groaning in travail until now. And not the creation only, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as in childbirth, awaiting the redemption of our bodies. So this means that the Dutch elm disease will always try to kill the elm tree. Wheat rust will always try to kill the wheat. Bacteria and virus will always try to kill you and me because the whole creation is at war with itself. And we see this played out all the time. We see it played out physically. We see it played out also emotionally. As this was first discovered in antiquity, the Greeks thought it was just a matter of physicality. It was just that trees were infected or rocks were infected. Little by little, they began to say, maybe it's more than just physical things. Maybe it's more than just bugs that infect us. Maybe even our heart gets involved. Not just physical infection, but since the heart of the seat of emotions and passion and rage and love and caring, and self-sacrifice. Certainly the heart is the seat of possible infections. A while back, 
I went to the doctor for something else, and he discovered that my heart was beating at 30 beats per minute. I said, how low does it have to get for you to die? He said, 28, you die. I said, oh. <laughs> and, and I realized that my heart was a catharsis, diseased, unclean, because the right ventricle was not doing what it was supposed to. So they put a heart cath in there, a cath, a thing that, that tends toward clean, and they forced my heart to beat, mechanically. Now the heart is attached to a lot more than just mechanical beat or blood vascular flow. It's attached to your emotions. It's attached to your state of mind, your wellness, your wholeness. That's your passions. It is even attached to your spirituality. There used to be a guy, now gone to heaven, who came to this altar, the same thing he will do this morning, and from the time he knelt down, he never took his eyes off the cross. And I knew why he did that. Because he wanted to just focus on Jesus. His heart was inclined toward Jesus. When he died, his heart was still inclined toward Jesus. So little by little, society, from ancient until the time of Jesus explained it, was that this blessed are the clean of heart, that they shall see God, is actually more of a spiritual matter than it is of disease. It is of disease, of course. But it morphs into, and the Bible describes it morphing into the matter of the heart, from which come all your passions, all your, your, your not just vicarious feelings of love, but your real personal feelings of love, and your care for your kids, and your care for your workers, your care for your husband and wife and the generosity of your spirit that flows from God himself. Rock of ages cleft for me. Moses wanted to see God. Been on the mountain 40 days. Didn't see God. Didn't see God. God fed him. God gave him 10 commandments. Didn't see God. God put him in the cleft of the rock. Passed by behind him. Moses' face glowed with even the back door view of God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now God can take wickedness, bad attitude, sin-filled life, bad turn of events, and turn them to good. He can take an unclean heart and make it clean. Blessed are the clean of heart, well, they will get a vision of God. I'll give an example of how God takes a bad thing and can turn it into a good thing. In 1936, this is a quiz, who ran fastest of all at the Berlin, Berlin Olympics? Who? Correct, Hunter. Jesse Owens ran faster. You know what Hitler insisted that they play at the 1936 Olympics as he was ramping up his Nazi party? Anybody know that German national anthem? You remember this? Deutschland, Deutschland, Eber alles, Eber alles, Deutschland. Deutschland, Deutschland, lieber alles, lieber alles in der Land. Turn to hymn number 648 in your hymnal. And see how that wickedness was turned to good. This time you're ready, aren't you? <laughs>